Good afternoon. My name is Christian Wabel, and I am a trauma neuro ICU nurse in San Francisco. My presentation today is from RN to RN, an educational video from me to you on why, when, and how to use the NPI 200 pupillometer system. And I want to let you know that at this time, there are no relevant con Interest to disclose. So starting at the beginning, why do we check pupils? So we're really looking at information regarding the shape, size, and reactivity of each pupil, not only in relationship to one another, whether they're equal or asymmetrical, but also changes in pupillary function assessment over assessment. Changes in pupillary function are often excellent early indicators of increased ICP and herniation, and they are detectable much earlier than a change in mentation. So before your patient begins to become drowsy, we can note changes in pupillary function, which is very valuable as a neuro nurse. So looking at technology versus us humans, what is the biggest pro to using technology or this piece of equipment? And that is this piece of equipment removes subjectivity. We as humans are providing subjective data to our electronic health records in that I may consider a reaction brisk while you may consider it sluggish. Do I have a pen light that's brighter than yours? Do I have the little pupil chart that tells me what each millimeter looks like visually? Uh, we erase that. We become very objective when using this technology because it is the same measurement time after time after time. So big pro is the objectivity of the data. And what exactly are we objectively measuring? So on a very accurate level, we're measuring the, the size and the constriction really of our pupils, well, the patient's pupils. One of the um, readings that you see here is called NPI. And this is actually a picture of the screen of the actual pupillometer. And NPI stands for Neurological Pupil Index. It was a scale, which is numeric, zero to five, and it was developed by neurosurgeons and neuroscientists. And what it's really telling us is what is the pupillary light reactivity of each pupil? How quickly does it react to light? Also, we want to measure size. So you can see on the screenshot that we have the right pupil in green and the left in yellow and a third column that says diff, which is difference or differential. And we can see that the reactivity is equal in both pupils at 4.8, but there is a 1.19 millimeter difference in size, meaning the left pupil is larger than the right. And it gives us a nice little line graph below where we can kind of get a very nice visual for us. Uh, I don't know about you, but I like, I like graphs and I like visual aids. So anything over one millimeter, as far as a difference in size, in my facility at least, is reportable uh, to our neurology team. So when is it appropriate to use a pupillometer? And I recognize that I'm coming from a rather unique perspective and vantage point in that I am a neurotrauma nurse in an ICU. But we're really looking at our stroke patients, any kind of traumatic brain injuries, any kind of um, bleeding of the brain that may or may be caused by stroke, aneurysm, etc. In addition to this, I've seen our trauma patients have ordered pupil assessments when they are on a PCA that is delivering an opioid. So any condition that the doctor or neuroscientist or neurosurgeon feels is appropriate to monitor fluctuations in pupil size and reactivity is the 
most appropriate time to use this pupillometer. And how often should we be utilizing it? And that's really up to um, the doctor. They generally write the order of how often they want a pupillometer uh, check done. But our nursing judge judgment tells us that whenever we're doing a neurological check, it's always a good idea to go ahead and take a pupillometer reading. When we have aggressively managed ICP patients, whether they have a Camino bolt or perhaps an EVD, we're doing this Q1 hour and it is valuable information and allows us to really be proactive in giving care and suggesting interventions. So how is it used? Well, this uh, slide is just a very broad, quick overview, kind of a step-by-step -step, um, how to use it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a smart guard and that is specific to the MPI 200. It is pictured in the lower corner. It is disposable and it is single patient use. So you only use it for one patient, keep it in the room, you throw it away when they are transferred or they have DC the pupillary assessments. It does have a microchip in it that records the patient's data. So we attach it to the pupillometer and I'll show you that in just a moment and pair the medical record to the guard and that's just done through scanning the record number barcode. So then you're ready for use. You're scanning the patient's pupils, the left and then the right or right then left, it doesn't matter. The buttons are marked right and left. And then we're going to manually in my facility enter the assessment numbers into the electronic health record. This system is compatible with Epic However, my facility does not have the patch. Hopefully that's coming. So what is it that we're looking for when we see this data? And really important is to denote changes. Changes are usually not a positive factor in a pupillometer assessment in my unit specifically downward trends in the NPI, which means I'm getting a brisk and now I'm getting a sluggish. The reactivity is slowing down. And we're going back to the NPI, which is that scale from zero to five. If you're three or greater, it's brisk. If it's less than three, sluggish. If it's zero, you're fixed. Take a quick look at the actual pupillometer and I did shoot this on my unit. Um, I do apologize the lighting is a little off but I think you'll get a good idea of what this piece of technology is, is all about. So here it is, it stands in the dock, it charges in that docking station as well. It is wireless and ergonomically designed. It has a touch screen as well as buttons that get you from each menu to each screen within the menu. And as you can see, it's by medical record number, so we are doing HIPAA protection here. So it gives you a history by medical record number of values of each pupillometer assessment done on the patient. And you can flip from screen to screen. The most important values are the MPI and the size. And we looked at the screen earlier in a, in a screenshot. Um, and then the right and the left buttons, they're not gonna let me do anything without attaching the smart guard, but that would free, be for right and left pupil. So the smart guard is attached, it clips on the back. You can see it kind of snaps into place right there. And this is the view you would get if you were the patient. And this is where the light flickers, and you can see my webcam there, and takes a picture of the pupil itself. And I always put it in the dock, make sure it's charging. You can see that there's Bluetooth technology activated. That's how it would communicate with the electronic health record. Again, we're hoping for that patch. So here again is a close up of the actual screen that you as the provider would see. And it has a playback mode that is excellent. These are the actual reactivity shots of the left and right pupil. And 
I find this fascinating as kind of a teaching tool because you get to actually see without violating the privacy of the patients. So how this will be used in my NP practice as I continue through this, this uh, process, <laughs> this is my first class, I do want to continue to focus on critical care. And this is a very powerful tool when we talk about neurology and trauma. And it can be extremely helpful in diagnostic situations because this may tell us when we need to go down to CT and get a better look at that brain and see if we have any herniation. So I'm actually excited to continue to use this as I advance in my practice role. So thank you very much for your time. I hope that this is something that you're excited about. Obviously, I am very excited about this technology and use it quite frequently. And there's a lot of science behind this. Um, here is are two of my, my references. And again, thank you so much for your time. Have a great day and much luck to each of you as you continue your educational journey.